Hey, what's going on? Let's see if we can do this again. I think it froze on on Laura's side, so hopefully hopefully it won't freeze again, which was a bit a bit bizarre. Cuz it hasn't done hopefully. Hopefully it should be okay. We go again. <laughs> Hey there. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I know, I know. I was talking and then it just froze and I was like... <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back. We go again. It's fine. It's, okay. it's fine this time. So um, you were saying, I think you were saying when you speak to your mum? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then we, it's always weird, like, because in, in Salzburg or where I stay right now, um, yeah, it's already dark and when I... I talk to them when I'm in Frankfurt and it's such a difference and it's just like four hours away. Ah, wow. So it's quite a big difference in terms of how dark and light it gets. Yeah. yeah. So how long, where are you now? What part of Austria are you in now? Um, Salzburg. Okay. And you're visiting Sarah, right? Um, I visited her yesterday. Um, ah. And right now I'm at my grandmother's place. I always ah. stay here. Um, because there's always a lot of snow and I miss the snow during the, um, during the year or whenever I'm in Frankfurt. So yeah. I always try to stay as long as possible at my grandmother's place. That's so sweet. It must be so nice being like, for me, obviously I live in London. So around like Christmas time and winter time, there's never any snow. So yeah. it's like really pretty around like, especially around like Christmas time and like the festive season being surrounded by snow I feel like it just makes it a little bit more like magical whereas in like it's rain yeah I know um, yeah. <laughs> it's great I mean it's I I love it like that um we had like two or three bad years where we didn't have that much snow so it's a big difference for us um but this year we are quite lucky so we we got snow I think some time at the beginning of December yeah and yeah now it's just perfect i bet how um how long are you out there for are you obviously you said you're with your grandma are there other family there as well so we spend a lot of time with them over the next coming days yes um i arrived last week on monday our last game was on the 19th and i have to be back in frankfurt on the 6th january the 6th that's quite a nice little chunk of time yeah. to get away. it's better than usual but yeah. Know that um, or I know that you don't have a break in England or just for f a few days so I'm I'm very happy with my two and a half weeks yeah I bet a, a few of the girls that I know that play in the, the WSL they had quite a short break I think it was around like six days or a week maybe like some of them are already back in training yeah that's crazy yeah so do you go back on the six to training or just back um, I go back on the 5th, yeah. Okay. Usually I try to stay as long as possible. <laughs> but now, um, yeah, I think I will come back one day sooner. A lot of people have been asking what your holiday, well, winter holiday break looks like. So how does it sort of go for you when, when you're not playing and you really get to relax and sort of step away from, from football for, well, as you say, two and a half weeks? <laughs> um, usually um, my break always starts with a Christmas dinner. So yeah. Saturday invited um, my mom is cooking um, and a friend is coming and also my sister um, so this is always the start of my of my winter holiday and after that I, I just drive to my grandmother's place um, spend some time with the family um, I try to not do anything at all but um, usually after five or six days I have to start moving again <laughs> And then I just do all the things I, I don't really have time for during the season. Um, I really like to go cross-country skiing or oh. skiing. So, yeah, I don't go skiing. So um, when I was younger, I was always skiing. But now I just don't feel like going skiing. Do you feel like it's maybe because it could be a bit of a risk to go? Um, yes. Skiing? Well, I think. And I'm not really into it right now. So... I don't really have to go, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. When you were growing up, were you quite sporty? Well, obviously, you play football now, you're a professional footballer. Like, you always had that. But did you try lots of other sports or was it always football? Um, I 
always played football, but I also tried, um, yeah, different kind of sports um, as cross country skiing, skiing. I played tennis, squash. So I tried everything, um, but I always, yeah, went back to football. If you didn't become a professional footballer, what what do you think you'd be doing? Um, I think I would be an athlete, yes, but. Yeah. I don't know which sport, maybe, maybe biathlon, you know, biathlon, it's cross country skiing with shooting. It's oh. also very yeah, popular in Austria or in Germany. So yeah, maybe I would do that. That sounds very, I can't actually imagine it. <laughs> yeah. It's... Oh. Yeah. You, it's, it's very exhausting. So it's like cross country skiing. And then you, um, when you're like, I think, when you're 18 or 19 years old, you you change. Um, so you have to carry your weapon. Before oh. 18, um, you always were able to run without it. Yeah. But when you're 19, then you have to carry it with you and then you just have to, to run. And then you stop and then you have um, to shoot. So you have, I think you have to do it. Like it always depends on how many times you have to do it. Yeah. But yeah, it's very exhausting, but it's fun if you like. If you would ever try it, I think you you would like it. So if I went to Germany or Austria and I said I wanted to play the sport, I could just yeah. stay and do it. Yes, you have to go to like a special place where you can do it, but you can try it. Yeah. Oh wow, that sounds cool. That yeah. sounds very cool. I've been to cool, Germany. But times, but I didn't know that was a a sport that they yeah. did. It's quite popular in Austria, Italy, France, Germany. Yeah. Wow. It's uh, maybe they'll bring it over to England. I don't <laughs> know, but you guys need snow for it. <laughs> yeah. So I don't think we'd, we'd have much luck with it. Unless we had like fake snow. But I feel like, is it, does it co uh, cover a really big area of space? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Sounds, it sounds extremely interesting though. I would absolutely love to. I don't think I'd be very good at it. I'm not going <laughs> to. It's very hard at the beginning, I have to say. It's like when I was doing it for the first time, I was I was terrible. So it took a few weeks to like get into it. Yeah, I am. Um, I definitely think I'd have to give it a good few tries to even be half decent. <laughs> not not even decent, just half decent at it. <laughs> so, um, how has it been this season for you? How have you enjoyed playing? Obviously, with fans coming back and being able to to have them back at games how how has that been with obviously the 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 change the world had for a while uh it was actually really nice um i i must say that i really got used to it not playing in front of a crowd yeah. and, and when we were um playing the first time i think we were playing against italy with austria yeah. and um, yeah, there was a crowd again, and then I was like, "Oh my god, I really miss this!" So, yeah. really nice. It's it's pretty cool. Yeah, I am. Um, I was able to go to games, obviously, like as media, and I'd go and there'd literally be maybe ten people in the media, and then the the girls who played, the players, obviously, in the backroom staff. But I remember going to stadiums and it just being so quiet. It was so bizarre. Yeah. It, like not having the fans there, even little things like the flags that they make and they have and like the atmosphere, the the energy that they bring. And then when they were allowed back in, it was like a breath of fresh air to, to like have everyone back. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that was really nice. Yeah. And I think they came back a bit louder as well, obviously having lots of time to, to rest their voices. So um, now when I'm in games, it's, it's extra loud. How important is it having fans at your matches to just support your, not only yourself, but your team? How much of an impact does it have, have on you? Um, it is quite important. I think that I always feel like whenever there's a crowd, you, you play better. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, I think you feel everything more. The intensity of the game or, yeah, I don't know, like everything is like, you always get a response, you know, whatever happens, you always get a response from the crowd, which is always cool. And um, yeah, I don't know, just the feeling when you see that there are many people, they come and watch uh, what you play. Um, this is always pretty cool and I, I really appreciate it. And um, it always makes me happy and also the girls. Yeah, of all the teams you've played for, including the Austrian national team, which set of fans would you say are the 
<laughs> are the loudest or bring the most energy? Uh, when I was playing for Sand, um, which is a, a small village in Germany, yeah. uh, <laughs> I think that crowd was pretty cool because everything was so special. Um, because everything was so small, the crowd was, or the fans, they were quite close to the to the pitch. Yeah which is crazy and they were singing all the time so um, I think it was always a lot of fun playing there. That's one of the things that I love about the women's game I love how close the fans are to the pitch and the players I think it makes the sport very very special um, it's like I prefer going to games where you're you're closer to the pitch in terms of being able to like see the game more whereas when you're in the bigger stadiums I don't I I don't know I feel more connected to it if that makes yeah. if yeah No it does cuz I actually feel the same when I like go to games um and yeah I think it's a it's such a big difference if you're quite close to the yeah. players or to the to the pitch or if you're far away and um I feel that on the pitch as well so sometimes if we play in a stadium uh where the fans are far away from the pitch it's always a difference Yeah where is your favorite stadium that you've that you've played at or you've been to um poor um i must say that i really love um the frankfurt stadium yeah uh the also the the women's stadium but also the the men's stadium um my favorites that that's really hard but i think it's frankfurt yeah i have to say yeah does it? What is it about the stadium? Is it just like the way it looks, the the fans that that come, the way it's presented? What is it about Frankfurt Stadium? Um, I think like the women's stadium, everything is quite close, so yeah. I like, and it, it has the perfect size for women's football. The pitch is usually quite good, <laughs> um, and we we always play good at home. Um, I think because of that, I always have a positive feeling about the the stadium. Yeah. Men's stadium is pretty cool as well. I like the way it looks, um, yeah. but fans, they are, they are really cool. Because before I was coming to Frankfurt, I didn't know anything about the fans or about the club. Um, and then I was there for the first time and it was crazy. And I, I really fell in love with, with the atmosphere and with the fans and, and with the club. What drew you into going to Frankfurt when you were obviously making the move? What, what, what was it that was like, yes, I want, I want to join this team. Like, I, w I want to be a part of it. Was there something in particular? Was it a few things? Um, yeah, it was quite interesting because I, I was never thinking about going there. Um, um, and then um, Verena, the, the Austrian player that also um, played in Sand and a very good friend of mine, um, we went to Frankfurt and we, we were talking to the coach and he, he was pretty cool. And um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I just, for me, it was, um, yeah, it was pretty, or I was, I wasn't really thinking much about it if I yeah. should not because I felt like he's pretty cool. He has good ideas and um, yeah, I just felt the connection and yeah, that's, that's why I went there. So it just felt right. It felt yeah. like, that. yeah, that's, that's really important. So obviously you are one of our ambassadors for, for We Play Strong and we sometimes get to see you with a camera in hand vlogging for us. Yeah. How much fun do you have with that camera? How did it, when you first started doing it, was it a bit scary and now like you're like a pro at it? How, <laughs> how much fun do you have with the camera in hand? Um, I would say the, the beginning was really hard because I was not sure what I should film and, yeah. and what's important and what's not important. So I, I almost filmed everything. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah so i really got into it um i think i'm much better now than at the beginning yeah but i yeah i was a bit shy also at the beginning because i was always using the camera and i was talking and and then you don't talk in your mother language which is also um a difference but yeah I think right now it's 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 easy. It's very easy and it feels natural, especially when I do it with Sarah um, when we're together at the national team. Yeah. Um, it always makes it easier or I always feel more comfortable with her. Um, but I think it's it's really cool because whenever I look back or I see and I watch an old episode, then yeah. I'll do 
yeah smile because i know what what like like what happened in the background you know yeah. so yeah it's always nice to to have those memories i think one of my favorite clips like of all time uh it's quite a recent one you were with sarah and you were showing the stadium and it was quite dark and you like pointed and you was like is that the moon and sarah's like no it's a floodlight <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that one i really i enjoyed that episode that was fun yeah i remember watching it and i literally laughed out loud because i, I genuinely just thought it was so funny that you're like oh the moon's there and she's like that's not the moon. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fun like obviously sarah's one of, one of your best friends it must be so fun being able to to not only play with her but make the vlogs with her and like i think some people could only dream of being able to do what, what you're doing with you like with your best friend by your side yeah it's it's so cool and um i really appreciate it and it's i mean i don't see her that often during the year um so whenever we see each other we always try to spend as, as much time as possible and um of course also the opportunity with we play strong that we can share this experience together is also pretty cool yeah i uh spoke to sarah about it when she was on the live with us a, well me a couple of weeks ago and i was talking about when um you played england and you all got the you laura uh, sorry you sarah and beth all got the selfie together yeah that was like i remember sitting i was like literally sitting at home and i got a message for it and it was a selfie of you three and i was like oh this is so sweet yeah yeah, it's, it was re actually really nice, yeah. And it's also always nice to, because sometimes you you see each other just on, on social media and then when you, you meet someone in person, it's it's really nice, yeah. Because somehow you feel like you already know a little bit about yeah. the person and, um, yeah, it's very comfortable. That's, that's so sweet. A question that got asked as well that I'm actually quite interested in is, who does your match day hair when you, like, do, like, the little plaits and stuff? Yeah. Um, usually it, um, it's, uh, it's Virginia Kirchberger. Um, yeah. I play with her at Frankfurt and also, um, in the Austrian national team. Um, but she got injured a few weeks ago, so I had to, um, do it on my own now. And now I do a different version of it. Um, so right now I do it myself. Okay. But you did have essentially a personal hairstylist with you all the time. <laughs> Genie, yes. <laughs> that's very handy i'm very very jealous <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's pretty cool because usually i'm very bad in things like this so yeah I, I, yeah i'm the same like i can just about put my hair up in a <laughs> ponytail honest honestly i'm not even just saying <laughs> I, I feel like when you have someone on the team who can who can do hair it's like a big win for everyone apart from the person who yeah. has to yeah because <laughs> some <laughs> I was a bit guilty. I was like, Chini, if you don't want to do it, it's okay. I can, we don't have to do it if you want to relax. And, but she's always like, no, no, I really enjoy it. Oh, that's yeah. so sweet. That's so sweet. We've um, had quite a few questions come through. So obviously you sent me the video where you told people to send in questions and we had loads coming through. So I'm going to reel some of them off because yeah. they might be angry at me if I don't ask the questions that they've sent in. So I need to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so the first question is what are your goals for 2022 um yeah i think 2022 is a big year the euros yes um, are in the summer so um yeah i mean our are the euros in in the netherlands they were yeah it was such a a crazy time for us um yeah it was i really like to yeah kind of be able to to repeat it and um because of this um i think yeah or it is my dream to like have a very similar euros than in the in in 2017 but i know it'd be really hard but we also know that um we have to to work a lot and that everything is possible so um yeah this is one of my of my biggest goals. This, yeah. um, and therefore, I need to or have to make sure that that I have a good form, that I am in shape, that I'm healthy, and yeah, this will take a lot of work. But uh, yeah, I hope it will be worth it. 
do you think obviously where you've you've got England in the group obviously uh, I remember being at the draw and uh, the England group come out and I was like oh my god like this is literally like a great great draw again do you think it helps because you've played them so like your team and yourself because you've played them recently and you've had that sort of fresh experience it puts you in like a really good position um yeah i think it does um because we also did that before um the euros in 2017 we were playing i think against england against netherlands so um against big nations and um whenever you play against uh, such great teams then you always um, learn something and um, I remember that we were playing against um, the Netherlands shortly before the, the Euro started and they were so good and, and we were like oh my god what's happening here um, they're really good and we need to, to work harder now and th this was really cool because everyone knew okay we have to do better we have to, to work harder do more and yeah because of this I think it's great that we that we already played them yeah definitely um talking about the national team do you remember your first call up for the for the women's um i don't yeah i think we played against no i'm not sure <laughs> I, think, um, I think it was when i was 17 16 17 yeah. oh, wow. um, so um yeah it's 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 I think almost 11 years ago or something like this so I don't remember everything anymore but <laughs> it's maybe do you remember where you were um in Austria somewhere, yeah. in, Austria. <laughs> somewhere in somewhere around <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay uh so a lot of um obviously a lot of young footballers both female and male look up to you being being a professional and doing so well what you're doing and, and the person that you are so What's your advice for young aspiring players who who would like to follow in your footsteps and other female f uh, f footballers' footsteps? What would be your advice to them? Um, my advice. Um, I think that I think it's always pretty cool if you find something that you really love, and especially. And I think it's it, it's it's so hard to to find a real passion. So if you if you found that, then just try to to live it and try to appreciate every moment. Um, that's what I had to learn. That in football everything just happens so quick, and you always forget about the good things. Or then you get injured and you're a bit annoyed or whatever. But um, I think you always have to to appreciate everything a little longer than everyone yeah. doing it because. As I said, um, everything happens so fast and um, yeah, that's something I, I would say that I would have maybe, um, I, would, I, I would have liked that I would have, okay, that's, <laughs> I'm sorry, sometimes it's so hard. To <laughs> no, no, it's fine. I, I think I would have realized it sooner, you know, to yeah. keep all the precious things um, a little longer and yeah. um, to value everything a bit more because time time yeah passes so fast yeah no that makes complete sense <laughs> it was, don't worry i knew exactly <laughs> what you're saying, <laughs> exactly what you're saying. Uh, another question we got is if you were this is actually my favorite question i say this every time oh, but right. if you were a manager and you had to have a five-a-side team who yeah. would, would make your team you're the manager so you can't pick yourself Okay, okay, okay. Um, Sarah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so, then um, I think also Vicky Schnaderbeck. Yes. Um, of her, she's pretty good. Um, uh, as well. I would say Penilla Hada, yeah. Um, two, two left, right? Um, Maybe um, who else? Who else? Um, I really liked playing with uh, Mana Ivabuchi. Yes. And um, who else? Lisa Evans, of course. That's a really strong team. <laughs> yeah. Strong team. Nice. When I asked Eunice to do it last week, yeah. she of the we play strong ambassadors she literally reeled all of them off oh that's good that's good <laughs> it was it was clever it's very very clever of her she did it and i was like wait i know what you're doing here 
um, someone also asked if you could we kind of touched on it earlier but it's a little bit different if you could be any other athlete for a day so it doesn't have to be a footballer it could be any athlete who would you be Ooh, um Lewis Hamilton I guess yeah <laughs> yeah. Fast, fast. <laughs> yeah yeah I think so yeah that's to be fair you can't really argue that getting nice cars drive really fast not get in trouble for driving fast yeah, yeah. great answer <laughs> what is your biggest achievement in football so far would you say um i think the yeah the euros um and also um, i won the the cup with um, bayern and also the um the championship twice yeah, so, yeah that's it i would say that's a that's a nice little big achievement to have. Can't can't complain at something like that, can you? Having having trophies and medals. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice, but it's not all about that. But it's really nice to to have them. Yeah. Uh, one of the questions as well. What is your? Do you have if you if you do a pre match song or playlist that you listen to to like get you get you ready for for game day? Um, no, not really. It always depends on my mood or, um, no, I don't really have one. No. When I was, when I was, um, in the Netherlands in 2017, at the yeah. year, I was always listening to Coldplay and usually oh. I didn't Coldplay at all. But during that time I was just listening to, it. <laughs> so it always depends, but I don't have a special song. Do you have a match day routine or like a, a special I sort of? I do have, um, and it also always depends on, sometimes my mom um, is here for a visit and I, I have to change it a little bit, but yeah. usually I always like to, to be on my own and just like do some visualization, um, just get into to a game mood. Um, I also do mobilization um, yeah. and yeah, just get ready for the game and then don't do anything special. Do you drink coffee before the game? In the morning, yeah, yeah, <laughs> but not before. No, I never do that. No. If you go to a coffee shop, so say you're on a you're on a day off and you go for a coffee, uh, what's your coffee order? Um, a cappuccino. So yeah, cappuccino. Cappuccino. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. I think it's important to know what coffee people drink. I find, I think that's quite a good like conversation yeah. start. Although I ask you at the end of the conversation, which but... one are you? Uh, which one would you order? See, I don't think I'm adult enough yet, so I just still go for like a vanilla latte, which I think <laughs> quite a very, very mild coffee. <laughs> okay. But it's still a coffee, so it counts, but it's just, I don't think it's as adult as a cappuccino. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so the last question before I let you go, because I promised I'd only keep you half an hour and I've kept you like 30 minutes so i don't want to keep you for too long and you're with your your grandma so i appreciate you want to spend time with her uh, what are you most looking forward to when you get back to football um i think just the the company um yeah. teammates it's always a lot of fun i really like being around people um and also like yeah just have fun with them and um but also work hard together, of course. Um, yeah, I really like being in, in Frankfurt. It's, I think everything is, is perfect for me there. Yeah. So I really enjoy, enjoy it there. And yeah, I'm happy to, to see all the other girls again. Ah, that's very, very sweet. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoy the rest of your time off, especially with your family and the, the lovely snow. Hopefully it doesn't continue to rain too much so you can go out and play not play in the snow but you know have fun in the snow and see yeah. beautiful places <laughs> uh, but thank you so much for joining me and have a lovely rest of your evening too thank you you too see you later nice bye, bye.